Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United's four most improved players under Ralph Rangnick. So Fred, he's really really improved under Ralph Rangnick. I hope Fred can persist with these good performances. Now Fred was very good in our last game against Norwich on the 11th of December. Fred was also very good in the 1-0 win against Crystal Palace. He scored a stunning goal late on. Wasn't only his goal against Palace why he was good, his overall performance was very good. Fred also made an impact in the 3-2 win against Arsenal because he got an assist in that game and he won the penalty. And he did well in the 1-1 draw against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge earlier on this season. If you do remember rightly, Fred squandered a chance in that game. I have heavily criticised Fred before Manchester United got Fred for 50 million from Shakhtar Donetsk a few years ago now Jadon Sancho I think he's also improved under Rangnick you know Sancho's done nowhere near as well at Manchester United as a lot of Man United fans expected but it does take some time for some players to settle in. Sancho wasn't that good against Norwich. Sancho was good in the first half against Crystal Palace, but he faded away in the second half. Sancho was very good in the games against Villarreal away and Chelsea away. He scored in both of them games. Sancho has only scored two goals for the club so far. But revert back to when we had Solskjaer, Man United could not get the best out of Sancho because Solskjaer persistently played him out of position and there was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in under Solskjaer. Uh, Manchester United got Sancho in a deal worth £78 million with add-ons included. Man United paid around £73 million up front. Sancho's got a contract with Man United until June 2026 as an option of a further year. Sancho did endure four good years with Borussia Dortmund before he signed for Man United. Another player that's improved under Ralph Rangnick and that's Alex Tellez. Tellez has played a lot in recent weeks. Uh, don't forget, not so long ago, Luke Shaw had a concussion. And Luke Shaw was out with that concussion for quite a while, wasn't he? He missed like four games in a row in all competitions. Now, obviously, Tellez played against Norwich. Um, I don't think he was that good against Norwich. Um, he did have a good chance that hit the crossbar from the free kick. I thought Tellez was far superior in the games against Palace, Arsenal and Chelsea than he was against Norwich. Tellez could leave Man United next year because he only really seems to play when Shaw's not available. Tellez is our second choice left back. The reason Man United brought Tellez in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. Earlier on this season, Tellez had injury. Man United got Tellez for £15.4 million with add-ons included from Porto. And another player that's improved under Rangnick, and that's Diego Dallo. He's played a few games because obviously Pesaka has had a couple of injuries. Uh, Dallow played against Norwich. I don't think he was that good against Norwich, to be honest with you. Don't forget he got a yellow card in that game. Dallow was far superior in the games against Palace and Arsenal than he was against Norwich. Dallow is our backup right back to Pesaka. Uh, I'm hearing that Dallow is not leaving Manchester United in January. There's been a few clubs in for him. Last season, Dallow had a loan spell with AC Milan. 
you know, reflecting on that, he gained some experience. And Manchester United got Dallo from Porto for nineteen million pounds. Dallo's got a contract to Man United until twenty twenty three. So they are the four players that I think have really improved under Rangnick. Now you know the news on the transfers. Uh, Julian Alvarez could be Manchester United's first signing of the Ralph Rangnick era. Reports have said today that Man United are in advanced talks with River Plate to sign Julian Alvarez. Julian Alvarez has a £17 million release clause. He's Current contract expires next year. Julian Alvarez has been at River Plate for a long time. Um, obviously, you know the news on Florian Wirtz. Uh, Manchester United are keen on 60 million rated Florian Wirtz. Florian Wirtz is Ralph Rangnick's number one transfer target for the January transfer window. I think there's been a few other clubs in for Florian Wirtz. Uh, Florian Wirtz is at Bayer Leverkusen. He's been at Bayer Leverkusen since January 2020. He's got a contract with Bayer Leverkusen until 2026. He's made around 50 appearances in the Bundesliga for Leverkusen. He's scored around 11 goals. Florian Wirtz is an attacking midfielder. He is only the age of 18, so he is very, very young. Got a lot of development in him. You know, Rangnick is targeting four German wonder kids. Uh, Manchester United have also been linked with Boubacar Kamara from Marseille. Now, it recently said that Boubacar Kamara's contract talks with Marseille stalled. His current contract at Marseille expires in the summer. Not so long ago, it said Manchester United agreed terms on a £10 million deal to sign Boubacar Kamara. And it did say that Boubacar Kamara was set to become the first signing of the Rangnick era. Uh, Boubacar Kamara is at Marseille. He's been at Marseille all his life. He joined Marseille as a five-year-old back in 2005. So obviously he's not their academy. He broke into Marseille's senior squad back in 2016. And he's gone on to make over 100 appearances. Boubacar Kamara is predominantly a defensive midfielder, but he can also be deployed as a centre-half. Um, you know the news on Erling Haaland. It's recently said that Manchester United are ready to pay Erling Haaland's release clause. Erling Haaland has around a £65 million pound release clause but doesn't become active until the summer. The other week, Bill said that Man United are currently only the serious bidder for Haaland. Uh, Rangnick has already spoken with Erling Haaland's father. Al Finch Haaland over the possibility of his son signing for Man United next year. You know, Rangnick is pushing for Man United to sign Haaland. You know, Haaland is regarded as one of the best strikers in the world because he is a prolific goal scorer. 
Haaland has got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2024. Borussia Dortmund got Haaland from Red Bull Salzburg back in 2020. Dortmund paid around 17.1 million. Don't forget when Haaland played at Molde, he played under Solskjaer. And obviously Man United tried to sign Haaland when Man United had Solskjaer. Um, Man United have also been linked with Amadadou Haidara. Early on in the season, Rangnick said that he wanted Amadadou Haidara as his first signing as Man United manager. Uh, Rangnick knows the player well because Rangnick used to manage RB Leipzig. Amadadou Haidara has a 33 million release clause. Amadadou Haidara has already admitted that he's a Manchester United fan. And he also said he's a Cristiano Ronaldo fan. Uh, Manu have also been linked with Antonio Rudiger from Chelsea in recent weeks. Uh, Rangnick admires Jude Bellingham and Declan Rice. The Athletic said the other day that Rangnick has identified a tall midfielder as a top priority for Manchester United to replace Matic. Uh, but in January, Rangnick will focus more on the outgoings than the incomings because Romano's already confirmed that Man United's main focus on new signings is in the summer, not January. We'll probably make one signing in the January transfer window. But Rangnick, he's enjoyed a good start to his managerial career at Manchester United. You know, so far Rangnick's unbeaten and reflecting on the win against Norwich on the 11th of December, that was back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League for Rangnick. You know, if Rangnick does well as the interim manager, there's a chance he'll get the Man United job on a permanent basis. Rangnick's Man United's interim manager till the end of the season. Then after that, he said Rangnick will continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. But there again, Rangnick's been warned he could lose the consultancy role if he doesn't get Manchester United into the Champions League. You know, Rangnick has been given £75 million to spend in January. Initially, he said he'd been given £100 million to spend. Before Manchester United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. In the summer, Manchester United will get a permanent manager. You know, there's been quite a few names linked with a permanent role at Man United. Um, obviously, the other week, Ruben Amorim was linked with the permanent role at Man United. Uh, Potticino has been persistently linked with a permanent role. Early on in the season, Brendan Rodgers was mentioned, but I disregarded Brendan Rodgers because Rodgers early on the season dismissed links to the Man United job. You know, Rodgers came out and said that I'm proud to be at Leicester. A few weeks ago, Roberto Mancini was mentioned as well. And that's about it. And also Eric Ten Hag, he's been mentioned a lot. A few weeks ago, Edwin van der Sar spoke about Man United's interest in Eric Ten Hag. You know, Man United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson because Man United have sat four permanent managers since Ferguson. You know, Man United sat Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho. And over a month ago, Manchester United sat Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But uh, Manchester United have got very, very good players. You know, look who we've got. We've got Edison Cavani. That's a good player. You know, Cavani will be leaving Manchester United next year. If he doesn't leave next month, he'll leave in the summer. He said not so long ago that Cavani has agreed to join Barcelona on an 18-month contract. 
Obviously, Barcelona has seen Edison Cavani as a replacement for Aguero because Aguero recently retired due to heart problems. Juventus have been in for Cavani in the other week. Cavani rejected Boca Juniors. Cavani, by the way, is back from injury now. Um, he's available for the game against Newcastle tomorrow. Should Cavani leave? Well, Cavani initially lost his place in the team with the club re-signing Ronaldo last summer. Manchester United got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Cavani's got a good pedigree behind him. Look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at PSG. He was also a long-serving player when he was at PSG. Uh, Rashford, he's a decent player overall. But I've got to say, Rashford's been very, very poor since he come back from that shoulder injury. You know, Rashford just hasn't been the same player since he come back from that shoulder injury. Uh, Rashford missed the first two months of the season with the injury. Uh, Rangnick needs to drop Marcus Rashford and he needs to play Mason Greenwood ahead of Rashford. Reports from Spain said the other week that Marcus Rashford could leave Man United as it said Barcelona and PSG are said to be interested. Rashford's got 18 months left on his current contract. Very sceptical that Rashford will leave next year. Rashford's been part of the club for a long time, you know, Reasonal Power Academy. He's been a Man United player since the age of seven. You know, he broke into our senior squad, was it, back in 2016? And uh, so he's been in our senior squad now for around five years. Um, you got Mason Greenwood, that's also a talented player. I've got to turn around and say Greenwood's been very good since he recovered from COVID. You know, Greenwood came on against Norwich in our last game. He played in the 1-1 draw against Young Boys. He was very good in that game. You know, Greenwood scored a very good volley. Greenwood also got the assist for the Fred goal in the 1-0 win against Crystal Palace. So there you go. Don't forget, though, at one point... Greenwood went a while without scoring. Uh, Greenwood did mention that he is upset that Ronaldo always starts. Revert back to 2019, he said Man United offered Mason Greenwood a life-changing amount of money to leave. Greenwood made his senior debut for Man United back in 2019. He's been a United player since the age of seven, so he has been part of the club for a long time. And last season, Greenwood signed a new four-year contract. <laughs> uh, Anthony Alanga, um, he looks a good asset for the first-team squad. He has made quite a few first-team appearances. Um, Alanga's made five first team appearances in all competitions. Now, not so long ago, Anthony Alanga signed a new contract with Manchester United until June 2026. There's an option to extend for a further year. I was surprised he signed a contract until 2026. I thought he would have probably signed a short-term contract, not a long-term contract. <laughs> uh, Man United have obviously got Bruno Fernandes. That's a very, very good player. He's one of our best players and he's one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. But I've got to say, Bruno Fernandes has been poor in a lot of games this season. And I'm shocked in that aspect because last season, Bruno Fernandes was superb. Uh, the last goal Bruno Fernandes scored for Man United was the 3-2 win against Arsenal. I think the last assist he provided in the Premier League was the 3-0 win against Tottenham. So that just 
proves how poor he's been. But let me put into the equation that Fernandez starts the vast majority of Man United's games, so reflecting on that, he will become fatigued. I think Rangnick needs to consider giving Fernandez a rest, but he won't. Fernandez has been a Manchester United player for almost two years now. Man United got Fernandez from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Uh, Fernandez has won awards, reflecting on his good performances at Man United. Earlier on the season, Fernandez made it clear that he wants to stay at Man United. And when he first came to Man United, he said, I've come to Manchester to win trophies. Fernandez has got a contract with the club until 2025. There's an option of a further 12 months. Earlier on the season, there was talks about Fernandez extending his contract. Uh, Man United have got the best player in the world overall in Cristiano Ronaldo. You know, Ronaldo's rescued Manchester United quite a few times uh, since he re-signed. And obviously, if it weren't for him, you know, Man United would be in a worse position than they're in now. Uh, Ronaldo obviously scored the winner from the penalty spot in our last game against Norwich. You know, Ronaldo now has 13 goals in all competitions since he re-signed. He's got 802 goals in his career. Revert back to October, Ronaldo got named Player of the Month. And revert back to September, he got named Premier League Player of the Month. So that's back-to-back -back awards since he re-signed. He has won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. He's under contract to Man United until 2023. There's an option of a further year. Ronaldo receives £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. He wears a number seven shirt, and Man United got Ronaldo for £19.8 with add-ons included. <laughs> Like I said, Sancho's a decent player. Uh, Donny van der Beek, he's also a good player as well, but haven't had a great deal of a perception on him at Man United. Because he seldom starts games. And I said we need to give van der Beek more starts. Uh, revert back to when we had Solskjaer, Van der Beek was frustrated because he didn't get enough opportunities. Towards the end of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's managerial tenure, Van der Beek confirmed that he wanted to leave Man United in January. As you all know, Van der Beek's not allowed to leave next month as Van der Beek is valued by Ralph Rangnick. Uh, Van der Beek's only scored two goals for the club and he's been a Manchester United player for over a year and a half now. Man United got Van der Beek for £40 million with add-ons included. Van der Beek's got a contract with the club until 2025. There's an option of a further year and he's versatile. He can play in three different roles. Uh, Fred, he's also done well recently, but I still think overall he's not that good of a player. Uh, Pogba, he's also a good player as well. He's not only a good player, he's an imperative player. Uh, Pogba has been out for a while with a muscle injury, but Pogba is very close to returning. You know, that's good news from a Man United perspective. Because revert back to the... Towards the start of the season, Pogba was in scintillating form. Pogba's got seven assists so far in the league this season. He produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season, but at one point last season he was out with a thigh injury for a while. Now, it said uh, on Christmas Eve from the Manchester Evening News that Man United are not negotiating a Paul Pogba transfer next month. So Man United expects Pogba to stay in January, despite him nearing the end of his contract. Pogba's contract at Man United expires in the summer, Revert back to the start of the season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract offer. Pogba may leave in the summer. Pogba's had a long-running transfer saga. He's been relentlessly linked with Real Madrid. His former club Juventus have been in for him. He did enjoy four good years at Juventus before he rejoined Man United. You know, PSG have been in for him. Barcelona have been in for him. And Inter Milan have been in for him. 
You know, Mino Viola, his agent's been working hard now for quite some time to get his client a move away from the club. This season's Popper's sixth season at Man United since he rejoined. He's won three trophies at the club so far, and Popper's Man United's most expensive sign at the moment paid £89 million for him. And we had him when he was a lot younger under the Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Scott McTominay. I don't think he's good enough to represent the club, but I think he has been good um, in recent weeks, to his credit. McTominay was actually good against Norwich, to be fair. And he did well against Leeds on the opening day of the season. He did well in the 6-2 win against Leeds last season because he scored twice in that game. But I don't think McTominay can get to that level where we want him to be at, you know. McTominay's still young, he's got a lot of development in him. Just after the first lockdown last year, McTominay signed a five-year contract with Man United. So, reflecting on that, he committed his future to the club. Um, Alex Tellez, you know, I think he's a good left-back as well. But like I said earlier, Ron could leave next year. I think Luke Shaw is a good left-back overall, but... Luke Shaw's been very, very poor this season when he has been fit, and I'm shocked in that aspect because last season Luke Shaw was superb. Uh, don't forget, earlier on the season, Luke Shaw had a concussion and he missed like four games in a row in all competitions. I'm sure under Rangnick, you know, Luke Shaw will regain his form. Shaw's been a Man United player for around eight years, so he's been a long-serving player and Shaw's got under two years left on his contract and he's Manchester United's first-choice left-back. Raphael Varane, I think he's also a very, very good centre-half. Now, Varane is available for the game against Newcastle. Uh, Varane's just come back from a hamstring injury not so long ago. Earlier on in the season, Varane had a groin injury and he was out with that groin injury for a few weeks. So, Varane's already endured two injuries since he signed for Man United. But when Varane plays, you know, he makes a huge difference. He really, really does. Uh, Man United got Varane in a deal worth £41 million with add-ons included. Man United paid around £34 million up front. Uh, Varane's got a contract with the club till 2025 as an option of a further year. Varane is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a good pedigree behind him. Look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at Real Madrid. I think Eric Bailly is a very, very good centre-half as well, but doesn't get in the team much. You know, Bailly lost his place in the team a while back, obviously with the club signing Varane last summer, and for some reason Lindelof's been preferred to Bailly. Don't ask me why, because Bailly is a far superior centre-half to Lindelof. In the games Bailly's played in this season, I think he's done really, really well, apart from the game against Man City when Man United lost 2-0. He had a poor game, did Bailly, in that one. The only element of concern about by is injury prone. Towards the end of last season, he signed a new contract to Man United till 2024. There's an option of a further year. Got by from Villarreal back in 2016 for £30 million. Harry Maguire, he's good centre-half when he wants to be. Hasn't really proven that much how good of a centre-half he can be at Manchester United. You know, Maguire's enjoyed a lot of poor games at Man United. There again, he's had some good games. I thought, to be honest with you, Maguire was far superior at Leicester than he has been at Man United. Maguire has been worse since he come back from that calf injury. Um, we brought him back too soon, didn't we, if you do remember rightly. Uh, Maguire had ligament damage in his ankle towards the end of last season as well. We overpaid for him. Man United got Maguire in a deal worth £80 million, so he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive sign at the club behind Pogba. I think Diego Dallo, he's decent. Um, and Juan Bissaka, I think he's a good right-back defensively, but the attacking side of his game is not so good. 
And there's aspects of Aaron Wan Pasaka's game that's got to improve. You know, he's got to show more attacking intent. His positioning's got to improve. His crossing's got to improve as well. Man United got Pasaka from Crystal Palace for around fifty million pounds back in twenty nineteen. And this season's been his third full season at Man United. Recently, Bissaka got banned from driving for six months and he got fined £31,500. And, you know, Man United have got a very, very good goalkeeper in De Gea. De Gea's back to his best now, I'd say. You know, De Gea deserves credit. He's done really, really well so far this season. In the last game against Norwich, De Gea got man of the match. And I also think Dean Henderson's a good keeper as well, but doesn't get in goal much, does he? Um, he'll be leaving next month, Henderson, because Romano said last week that Dean Henderson wants to leave Man United in January to get more game time. Henderson's only made two appearances this season, but towards the end of last season, he did get that number one jersey, and he did well in a lot of the games he was in goal for last season. Um, earlier on this season, Henderson had covid Anyway, so there you go. You know, Man United have got very, very good players. Um, Martial's leaving Man United next month. Uh, Sevilla want Martial on loan. It's already mentioned that Sevilla have reached an agreement in principle to sign Martial, but it did say Martial's wages are the stumbling block for Sevilla. Martial... Wages at Man United are around £240,000 a week. There's been quite a few other clubs in for Martial as well, not just Sevilla. But um, a few weeks ago, you know, Martial's agent confirmed that Martial wants to leave Man United in January. Obviously, Martial is demanding more game time. He's getting nowhere near enough game time at Man United. Uh, Mata, he'll leave as well next year. Cavani's leaving next year. Lingard will leave in the summer. As you all know, he said Lingard will stay at Man United in January to fight for his place under Rangnick. Um, Pogba may leave in the summer. I think Matic will leave next year as well. Um, Jones and Bay will leave next year. Telez could leave next year. Um, I think Man United will loan Ahmad Diallo out. And... Um, Henderson, he's leaving as well. So there you go. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.